Roadkill by Sean Baines Recorded by Tom Bennett Squinting against the morning sun, Nick returned home in his car. The road cut through rolling farmland and green fields dotted with black and white cows. There was no traffic at this time of the morning, and he felt like he had the world to himself. It usually made him feel serene. The one thing he didn't enjoy about his drive home was the roadkill. He eased his car around the ruined body of a badger. It had been knocked down a week ago. With every morning, he saw its carcass diminish. He flexed the tension from his fingers and hoped his wife Katie was still asleep when he got home. It would make it easier when he disappeared from her life. As he rounded a bend, there was a streak of fresh blood in the road. His mouth opened in surprise. Whatever had left that mark was more than an injured animal. He parked carefully and climbed from his car, following the blood trail to a ditch overgrown with ground elder. Lying on its side was the body of a man dressed in a tracksuit. His neck was snapped, his head hanging at an unnatural angle. Nick looked into his dead eyes, and his stomach lurched. There was something familiar about him, though he was sure they'd never met. Nick, is that you? Oh my God. His neighbour Valerie ran toward him. She was dressed in a dark suit, her long auburn hair tied neatly into a ponytail. He could see she'd been crying. Val, what are you doing here? he asked. She placed her hand on his shoulder to steady herself. God, Nick, it's so awful. I just didn't see him. He glanced at the yellow tracksuit. The victim had clearly worn it to be visible. What happened? he asked. I finally got a job interview. I was on my way there. Everything was going to be all right, and... Valerie started to cry, and Nick felt awkward. He wanted to help, but didn't know how. His wife always complained he was emotionally distant, and here was the evidence. He winced as he put his arms around Valerie. She cried into his chest. The awkwardness didn't leave. He stiffened when he smelled alcohol. Have you been drinking, Val? She looked up at him and flushed with guilt. It was a really big interview. I, I was nervous. You know how much it would have meant to get a new job? He knew. Valerie was about to lose her home. She had been made redundant eighteen months ago from the same dairy that employed Nick, and she hadn't been able to find work since. One wine-soaked night, she confessed everything to him. Her debts, her drinking, her loneliness, her despair. Nick felt sorry for her, but it didn't excuse her from drinking and driving. Jesus, Val, you were drunk behind the wheel of a car, and you killed someone. She began to cry again. Nick cursed himself for being so blunt. What am I going to do? she asked. We have to call someone. We can't. I'll go to prison. I'll lose everything, Nick. We can't just leave him here. Valerie wiped the tears from her eyes and sniffed back her sobs. Can't we? Nick's eyes widened and his heart thudded at the mere suggestion. Of course we can't. It's a crime. I just killed a man, Nick. Is abandoning the body worse than that? Valerie was beside herself. You're always talking about how animals die in the fields around here and they're never found. It's the same thing. It's not the same thing. It's nowhere near the same thing. Nick took his car keys from his pocket and walked back to his car. I can't have anything to do with this, Valerie. You need to call the police. I'm going home. Going home? To your wife? He stopped, his keys sitting heavily in his hand. Valerie had asked him the exact same question the night they slept together. It was a one-off. They were drunk. He'd had another fight with Katie, and Val had just lost her job. When it was over, Valerie lay in bed while he dressed. That same accusatory look was in her eyes now. You can't bring that up now, he said. I didn't bring anything up. Nick walked back to her. For your information, I'm leaving her. Today. Does she know? Or are you just going to disappear into the wilderness like all your precious animals? He had an answer, but it was too shameful to admit. The closest to telling his wife he was leaving her was writing a note four months ago. He'd thrown it into the bin when the gravity of his decision overwhelmed him. Katie had known he was a coward when she married him. It was something she liked to bring up whenever she had too much to drink. The worst of it was she was right but he had finally had enough. Because he worked nights, Katie was always around, following him, making sure he didn't do anything she disapproved of. But last night, he'd managed to stash an empty suitcase in the back of the wardrobe. She was rarely awake this early. It would take ten minutes to pack, and he'd be gone in fifteen. I'm going home, he repeated. Wait, Nick, please. Valerie raced to his side as he reached his car. 
The sun was higher in the sky, its light catching the yellow of the dead man's tracksuit and distracting Nick. He had seen the man recently, he just couldn't place where. You can help me, Valerie said. How? You're leaving, right? All we need to do is put the body in the back of your car and you can hide it wherever you end up. She saw the look of alarm on his face and shook her head. You're right, you shouldn't be involved. We'll put him in my car. I'll drive you home. You can pick up your things and we'll go back to your car. No one will ever know. I'll take care of everything once you're gone. What about Katie? We had a few drinks while you were at work. She'll sleep till noon. It was still early and the road was quiet, but it wouldn't be long before another car came their way. Nick worried at his lip. If someone else stopped, they would call the police for certain, and there'd be a lot of questions. He'd finally found the courage to leave his wife. If he lost momentum now, he'd never get it back. He'd end up staying with Katie forever, and that was a prison sentence all of its own. Valerie looked at him expectantly, and he nodded. Thank you, thank you, Valerie said. I'll get my car. I've got a change of clothes in there too. I don't want to smell like a brewery if I'm stopped later. Nick waited nervously while Valerie ran down the road to find her car. He stared at his hands, which flexed uncontrollably. The minutes dragged. He tried to ignore the dead man, but his tracksuit glowed like a beacon. It was as if he was trying to draw attention to himself, to undo their plan before it was too late. At last she returned. She wore an all-in-one bodysuit which looked like pyjamas. Where did you get those? he asked, as she stepped outside her car. I keep them on the back seat in case I break down and need to keep warm. She turned to the dead man, and Nick followed her gaze. She seemed to sense the sickness in his stomach. You'll be gone in under an hour, Nick. Stay with me until then. I really appreciate you doing this. She nudged him, and Nick climbed down into the ditch. Grab him under the armpits, Valerie said. The boot's open. Nick closed his eyes and reached under the dead man. He heard the crinkle of his tracksuit as his hands searched for a purchase. Valerie was tugging at his ankles. He took a deep breath and lifted. Together they clambered out of the ditch and hoisted the body into the car. They climbed into the front. As he settled into his seat, Valerie pressed a button on the dashboard and Nick heard the doors lock. Safety first, she declared. She drove fast, but took the bends carefully. They were silent. Valerie concentrating on driving, while Nick quietly fretted. Suddenly, she swerved waking him from his thoughts as she avoided a rabbit too startled to get out of her way. Nick looked into the side mirror and saw it scuttling into the hedgerow. If only you'd been as quick to avoid that man. Valerie ignored him, pressing harder on the accelerator. The countryside passed in a blur. This morning, Nick had planned to leave his troubles behind. Now he was travelling with them. God help them if they got stopped. The moment he touched the dead man, he'd become an accomplice. All he could hope for was to get his bag and run. Away from Katie, away from Valerie, away from everything. His cottage was around the next bend in the road. Valerie slowed down. Nick, I want to say thank you. Perhaps if we had got together after that night, none of this would have happened. She stopped at the gate to his driveway, and Nick got out of the car to open it. He looked at the cottage, expecting to see Katie scowling from a window, but there was no sign of her. He let out a sigh of relief and climbed back into the car. Before he could stop her, Valerie kissed him on the mouth, her tongue searching for his. When he pulled away, Nick was breathless. He sat back in his seat and closed his eyes. He realised Valerie didn't taste of alcohol. In fact, since she had changed, there wasn't a whiff of alcohol about her. How much did you drink again this morning? Valerie drove slowly up the long driveway. She parked outside the cottage, opened the glove compartment, and fished out a crumpled piece of paper. She threw it in his lap. Instinctively, Nick picked it up. It was a note. It read, I'm sorry, but I had to do it. I couldn't take it any more. He recognised it immediately. It was his note, the note he had written for his wife four months ago. Where did you find this? He asked Valerie, panic rising in his voice. I didn't. Katie did. His eyes widened in horror. His wife had known all along. Valerie had known. They had both known he was leaving. It was a valuable find when it came to framing you. His heart quickened. Valuable, value, valuation. That's it, he thought. He remembered where he'd seen the dead man. A fleeting glimpse, but it was him. He was sure of it. He had been at Valerie's house only a week ago. That man, he's an estate agent. He came to value your house. Valerie's face darkened. The bank was forcing me to sell. 
The house is worth less than when I bought it. I was going to lose my home and still be in debt. I couldn't stand by and let that happen. So you killed him? You killed him, Nick, not me. When Katie realized you were leaving, we saw a way of solving both our problems. Nick grabbed the handle of the door, but Valerie had relocked it. Safety first, she had said, but it was her safety, not his. He turned to face her. How did you know I was leaving? I wrote that note four months ago. I could have left any time. Your suitcase, Nick. Katie'd been looking for it ever since the note. She guessed it would take you time to pluck up the courage to leave. In the end, it worked out rather well. Don't you know a wife knows all of her husband's little secrets? She gave him a smile before slamming her face into the steering wheel. Nick recoiled from the repulsive crunch it made. Valerie unlocked the doors and threw herself to the ground. The police came from nowhere. They were armed response, shouting and waving their guns. In the noise and confusion, he heard Valerie's voice. He took me from my bed. He killed my precious boyfriend. He said I was next and his wife too. As if on cue, Katie stepped solemnly from the cottage and he was dragged from the car. His arms were wrenched behind him, and he felt the cold metal of handcuffs being snapped tightly around his wrists. He kept his eyes on his wife and the phone she had in her hand. While Valerie was persuading him to hide a dead body, his wife was arranging for the police to arrest him. Who knew what she told them? He heard Valerie crying. Her sobs sounded genuine, as genuine as they sounded when she stopped him in the road. He believed her then. There was no reason why the police wouldn't believe her now. A police van pulled into his drive, and he was thrown into the back. The last he saw of his wife was a grimace she gave him when they closed the door. Nick didn't know the dead man was Valerie's boyfriend, or whether he really was an estate agent. Maybe he was both. Nick didn't know. He also didn't know that his wife had hated him so much and for so long that she was willing to frame him for murder. He only knew one thing. Today was going to be the last day he saw his wife. As the police van rolled down the driveway, he smiled.